Let's turn our Bibles to the book of 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. We're going to read some verses today. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 18. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 18. The title of the message is, It's Not an Easy Road. 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 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. The Bible says, I charge therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. And Tychicus have I sent to Ephesus. The cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus, when thou cometh, bring with thee and the books, but especially the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Of whom be thou ware also, for he hath greatly withstood our words. At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not, it may not be laid to their charge. Verse 17, notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out, the, out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Brother Jacob, could you please pray for the message? Lord, thank you once again for allowing us to get together this place to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for your King James Bible. Thank you for preserving it to us. We ask you that you will fill Pastor Jay with the Holy Spirit. Speak through him, Lord. Convict us of sin and help us to repent and change for the better. We ask you that you fill each and every one of us with the Holy Spirit. Help us to live a spirit-filled life and help us not to give occasion to the flesh. We ask you that you be with those listening online as well. Uh, be with them as well. Uh, protect us from devil's attacks. We ask you that you'll help us to focus on you and your word only and not on the things that are happening in our lives or the things that are happening outside. We trust everything in you and just say and pray. Amen. 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 It's not an easy road. As we see, you know, when Apostle Paul wrote, you know, 2 Timothy, that's where chapter 4, before he was going to leave this earth, you know, he said some stuff. And he fought a good fight, and he told Timothy to continue to preach. But unfortunately, like some people, did not finish well, like for Demas. He, had, he left the faith. Why? Because he loved this present world. Christian walk is not a piece of cake, contrary to some people will tell you. You know, it's not those you, prosperity gospel. You know, you go to church, you give money to church, and you suddenly, your life, all your life's troubles are all resolved. It's never like that. 
and those false preachers, right? As we see in first part of, you know, chapter 4, verse 3 says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. People have itching ears, right? You know, why do people always want to have easy road? But I don't know about you. I like comfort, right? I mean, I'm a human being. You know, if I don't have to, you know, labor too hard, you know, I, I'll take the easier road. But Christian walk is totally different. You can't be looking for easy road all the time. If you look for easy road, then you're going to find a lot of traps in those easy road. If you take the easy road, it will always give you more detours. All of your Christian walk, and if you've been saved for a long time, if you have taken the easy road when in your Christian walk, you definitely had to make a U-turn or make a detour. Amen. And that easy road has led you to a lot of heartache, a lot of sin, and also a lot of wasted time. Too many prodigal Christians out there, right? Yes. You know, we tend to start off well, especially if you gotten saved recently, I'm sure you know the first love. And then you love what Christ has done for you, you're gung-ho, you have zealous, you have love for the lost souls. However, that doesn't last forever, unfortunately, unless you work at it. The Bible says you and I are soldiers of Jesus Christ. As soldiers, you have to continue to march on. And as soldiers, why are, you, why are people called soldiers? Because they're always preparing for war, or, if, or, or they're in the war like Ukraine, Russia, all the, you know, some parts of the world where there's constant conflict going on. If you were to ask any military personnel who's currently in war somewhere, ask them, is it easy? I mean, 99 out of 100 soldiers will say it's not easy, right? You're always, always looking for the enemy. Imagine if you're the watch guard and then you fall asleep. Your whole entire base will be destroyed. Recently, we had a terror attack, supposedly, in Russia, right? You know, ISIS. And US government told Putin, hey, something's going to go down. Danger's imminent. And Putin said, no, you know, you're playing games with me. Now, what do you know? I mean, last time I checked, at least like 130 plus people died. Yes. And there were a group of terrorists who just started shooting at the concert goers. So U.S. government told them, hey, do not get together. You know, this way discourage people from gathering in crowds. And then it happened. And, you know, there could be different stories if you dig deep into it. But do you think that those concert goers who were there thought that, okay, tonight, terrorists are going to come and shoot us? They'll never think like that. Right. As Christians, if you are not careful, if you start thinking that, hey, this is so easy, you know, there are some testimonies out there because people went through so many trials and tribulations and they overcame by grace of God. They say it's a lot easier now. But it's never easy. Why? Because you have your adversary, the devil, always attacking. You have your flesh and you have the world constantly bombarding you with their own agendas and their pleasures. It's not an easy road. If you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have the resource, you have the power, you have someone living inside of you who could make it easier for you. Amen. But if you don't trust Him constantly, if you don't rely on Him, then your Christian walk will always be hard. Yes. And unfortunately for many Christians, they can hold on to the truth. They can hold on to the King James Bible. Mm -hmm. They can hold on to the Bible-believing ministry, mm -hmm. which is so few out there in the first place. Yes. Right. Why? Because they have itching ears. Right. Like, I don't want that preacher telling me that I'm going to hell. 
if I don't trust Jesus Christ and him alone as my Lord and Savior. I went to many places. I graduated from Christian college. <laughs> they said, God is love. They said, Christ is all about love. Loving God will not send me or anybody to hell for eternity. Uh, That's what my false preacher told me. Yeah, deceived. They are all deceived. Why? Because they don't want to hear something that's preaching and preaking at their heart. Yes. Do you guys love to be lectured? I don't know about you, you know. I mean, do you guys want someone to constantly pick at your mistakes, right? I mean, if you're married, that's the last thing you want, right? Lord, help me. Yeah. But as Christians, you need to be picked on all the time. Amen. That's why there's Bible. That's why there's preaching. If my preaching has gotten to you in some way, God is working. Amen. Amen. If it's not, then either I'm not right or you're just so backslidden it doesn't matter to you. Backslidden. Yeah. Yes. Why? Because it's not an easy road. Don't think that I had a, such a great day at church Sunday. You think that tomorrow's going to be as good as today. No. No. You have to work at it constantly. It's just like marriage, right? Married couple, they think that, okay. And you know, the people always say they have a honeymoon stage, right? Hopefully you guys had honeymoon stage, you know? <laughs> I mean, you didn't go straight to, you know, nagging or fighting stage right away. Everything that the other person does, whether it's mistake or whatnot, you loved it, right? But as time passes by, as you guys get used to each other, trying to get used to each other, a lot of their faults start to come at your, you know, sight. You hear it, you feel it, you see it. And you have to work at it, yes. right? You know. That's why beauty is vain. Yes. Whether you are a young Christian or Christian man or Christian woman, I mean, you shouldn't marry because of someone's looks. Right. You know, it's a vain. It's vanity. Yes. It flies away. Why is it that a lot of so-called Hollywood couples who are supposed to be you know, good-looking and pretty, they just say quits very quickly? Because beauty is vanity. It just disappears. You have to look at the heart and you have to try to see, can I serve the Lord with this person well? Amen. You know, that's number one thing if you're looking to get married and looking for a mate. So coming back to it, as you can see, there are a lot, a lot of fables out there. Yes. One of the fables that I've heard and one of the wrong doctrines that people are saying, so someone, you know, saw my preaching, and I preach against charismatics, right? Yes. And they're saying I'm charismatic. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. Wow. So you haven't been really paying attention at all. Yeah. Yeah. They're saying, and then some people are saying, you know, speaking in tongues, and what else? Uh, seeing Christ in your dreams, God in dreams, it's biblical, right? As in, it saves you. No. I mean, I've been preaching against it ever since. Yeah. You know, Amen. I learned the truth. Amen. What does that tell me and what does that tell you? People only want to hear what they want to hear. Yes. Sure. Like, I, tr I, I said as clearly as possible from the Word of God. Yeah. You know, going through yes. verses in Corinthians. And they refuse to acknowledge it. Yeah. It will always be a tough road, more tough road for someone who's not willing to do exactly as what the Bible says. King James Bible. Amen. Amen. And I told congregation before, a lot of people have a hard time believing that King James Bible is the perfect word of God. Yes. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know what's wrong with you. I mean, you're, you're that smart, right? Your life will never get any easier when you don't have final authority right. without the Word of God. Even with the Word of God, it's hard, yes. mm -hmm. right? Yes. I mean, we know what the Bible says, and the Bible clearly says to do this and not to do this. 
Yes. And if you don't follow, it's not going to be an easy road. Yes. As Christians, you just have to put it in your head. Until I go to heaven, it's not going to be an easy road. That's it. That's it. You just have to have it in your head. Like if you're in a military service, say you're in like Marines, right? It's not going to be easy. Everybody who thinks that when they go to military service, they think it's easy, they always, you know, get a cold bucket of water like a splash down in their back behind, right? Oh, you know, I worked out every day, you know, I follow everything I saw on, you know, YouTube, how to be prepared for military. <laughs> but once I get in there, it's totally different. That's what Christian walk is. It's never going to be easy, brethren, Amen. you know. Some days God gives you and I enough grace, so we enjoy it. But the Bible also says you could be joyful always, right? Even though it's not an easy walk, easy road, you and I could always be joyful. Why? If you're doing anything, I mean, literally anything as if you're doing it unto the Lord, you're going to be fine. I mean, you could be doing backbreaking work. You're going to be okay because I'm doing it as unto the Lord. If you're going through any physical ailment, ailments, right? You're going through any, any really, really, you know, tough things going on in your life when it comes to health-wise, you could still go through it joyfully. Because at the end of the day, if Lord Jesus Christ is in you, and if you're part of the body of Christ, and you know that everything will work out for good, then even though it's hard, right? Some of you, you know, I mean, I empathize with you. It's hard. You have to go to the hospital. You have to take medicine. You have to go through the chemo sometimes. You have to go through, you know, all these therapies and all of that. He's taxing on your body. God never said he's going to just get rid of it. Right. He's not Joe Austin. He's not those, you know, prosperity healers out there who's using the word of God to deceive people and steal money from people. Yeah. He says he will give you strength. He said you can do all things through Christ, which strengthens you. And if you're going through any of those things, just think of it like, you know what? It's going to get me closer to the Lord. It is what it is, right? You know, people say it is what it is. Yes. But it is what it is. Amen. But the greatest thing about it is what it is to Christian is that we have love of Christ in us. Thank you, Lord. If you trust in Jesus Christ, you have received God's love. Amen. That's it. God showed his love on the Calvary. Yes. And if you trust in Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have love of God. Amen. That's the true love of God, right? It's yes. not the worldly love of God people talk about. No. Then, even though it's not an easy road, point number one is that with Christ's love, you can endure anything. With Christ's love, you could endure anything, right? And only way you could have love of Christ in you is if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Think about it. Lord had to go through every, every, every temptation, every pain and suffering you and I could ever go through. Yes. And he endured it all. I mean, and he's inside of you, and he could strengthen you. Even though Christian walk is not an easy road, because of love of Christ, you can win. You don't have to be like Demas, right? I don't have to be like Demas. Amen. Right? Why do I have to end this race right. horribly? Same as you. The fact that you're still continuing, that's a good sign. Amen. Because many people will just quit. Yes. Right? Why? Because they don't look at inside of their heart. They don't look at that love of Christ. And they just become discouraged. You know what's the worst thing for to see a Christian become? They become a depressed Christian. You know, depressed Christian is like very bad. It's like a canker sore. You know, I mean... Some people get cold sores, you know, outside. Yes. And I get cold sores inside sometimes. Yes. Man, it hurts. Yeah. Every time I eat, sometimes it gets near the throat. So every time I swallow, 
man, it hurts. It messes around with you. It's like, I don't know, it affects the nerves and stuff. As Christians, you have to understand, if you, during those times when you have a canker source, cold source of your life, if you don't rely on love of Christ, you cannot go on. People say, oh yeah, you know, one thing that really helped me in my life, like someone gave me a loving word, right? People say, oh yeah, you know, I was going through such a hard time and my husband gave me a tremendously loving word, kind word. My wife did, my children did, you know, my mom, my dad, my parents, you know. It will get you through. Then if you have love of Christ in you, where are you going to find more love? You got to go to the word of God. It's God's love letter to us. Amen. You know, sometimes you need that kick. Sometimes you need that push. Sometimes you need that extra caffeine, right? Yes. You need that coffee, right? You know, don't go to coffee all the time. You become too jittery, right? You know, you got to go to the word of God. Amen. Man, I'm down and out today, Lord. What should I do? He's like, I have answers for you. You're already speaking to me. That's a good thing. Let me talk to you more. Go to the word of God. Amen. Right? It is without saying, if you start your day with prayer and word of God, your day is always more worth it. Amen. You have better fruits. It becomes less hard for you in your Christian walk. But I guarantee you, if you don't start with the prayer and word of God each day, you're going to really feel it. It's not an easy road. Man. It's like you didn't even start with the right stuff. It's almost like going out this door and there's a battle going on. You're going out there with just your pajamas. No weapon, right? You don't have guns. You don't have shield. You don't have vest. You don't have anything. You don't have helmet. You're just going out there with your pajama and maybe your toothbrush, right? Slaughter. And then you're going out there. And then, you know, you, and then enemy is so smart. You have to understand. Yes. Devil is smarter than you and me. Amen. Devil knows exactly where to hit to get you. And devil loves to wait, you know. And devil is just like a roaring lion, you know. Yes. I mean, it's lurking. And then it's like looking for the perfect moment. You know, if it's my cold soul, he'll just press on my cold soul. If you have a, like a cut on your arms or your legs or your body, he'll just press it. Yes. It's going to press that wound perfectly. And you can't really get out of it until the process finishes. That's why you should never get into it in the first place. Right? Amen. Have you really thought about love of Christ lately? I mean, think about it. Help us, Lord. I mean, Apostle Paul went through so much stuff. But love of Christ constraineth him, and love of Christ got him through everything. Amen. What, what, should, what should your answer be? Like, someone asks you, hey, brother, hey, sister, how do you find joy in this situation? Right? For example, like Sister Choi passed away and she went to be with the Lord. I mean, you know, physical human interaction side is sad, right? You lost a really loving, caring, yes. you know, great testimonial sister. But she's in heaven and we're going to see her again. Amen. And then we wait for that blessed all more and more and more, right? Yes. Because we're going to see all of the loved ones again Woo. who fell asleep. Right? I mean, if you see, you know, someone sleeping in the Bible, it's referring to our saints, say people, you know, who passed away. You gotta see them again. Amen. And you're gonna see them up in the air, Lord willing, you know, one way or the other. Yes. Yes. Right? If we're still alive and rapture happens, we'll meet the loved ones up there. Right. We're dead, we're up there, we're gonna meet the loved ones who's still alive, you know, up in the air. Right? I mean, that's what blessed hope is. Amen. And then you and I will have glorified body, perfect body. Amen. I mean, when you trust Christ as your Lord and Savior, your soul saved. Perfect. Yes. But we have something called body. 
Yes. Our body won't see that day redemption until that day of rapture, yeah. right? At that time, we'll have that perfect body, hey. right? Man, sometimes I sleep wrong way. Man, my neck hurts. <laughs> I mean, what did I do? I mean, am I supposed to be stay awake? I mean, I, I have no control when I'm sleeping, right? And then, man, those aches are there. Sometimes you have this headache coming your way. You can't move as fast as when you were younger. You know, you tweak stuff a lot faster. Yeah. And as you age, I mean, you know, you reap what you sow. That's why children, you have to eat your vegetables. Yeah. Eat right. Get rid of soda in your life, Thank you me. know. Because it's going to get you. Yes. God is perfect God. Your body is temple of Holy Ghost. If you abuse it in any way, God's going to make you pay for it. That's why you reap what you sow, but you pray to God that you sow a lot less. Yeah. You know, ask God for grace and mercy. And eventually, all those things kind of come out, right? Oh, don't we all wish we we're in, like, you know, our prime of our life, you know? I mean, 33 and a half, up to, right? And after, it's all downhill, right? Uh -huh. And before that, you didn't have to worry about what you had to eat too much. You didn't have to worry about your cholesterol too much. A lot of people, diabetes, right? Yes. Cancer. You didn't have to worry about, you know, a bunch of other, you know, diseases and illnesses out there. But at that day, day of rapture, yeah. once and for all, you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Man, what do you, what, why are you not excited about that, right? Yes. I mean, you have the word of God. You have, you're, are you having a hard day? Just go to, you know, First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18. You know, 18 says, come from one another with these words. Amen. And you see your wife, she's, she's down and out, having a hard time. You see your mom, you know, you see your grandma, loved ones, right? Like, let's read this together. Uh, one day, you won't have to worry about that body ever again, right? You're going to have a perfect body. Yes. And you're going to be with the Lord. Yes. I mean, the trump in the Bible is a sound, right? It's God's sound to us. To others, it will just sound like thunder, unsaved people. Think about it. And then the Lord says, come up hither. You know, if you're saved, you know, come up hither. Amen. Richard, Tracy, come up hither. Yuki, right? You know, come up hither. Oscar, Oscar. You know, I mean, you know, you guys will know, if, you know, your own ears will hear. Man, that is what I want to hear. Yes. In a twinkling of an eye. Yeah. Amen. Right? I mean, people who die before us, they'll go up, their body will just go up and, you know, it's almost like, you know, all your imagination coming to be true. Woo. All those bodies, you know, who, de I mean, they're dirt now, decayed, you know. Yeah. Some of them were burnt or some of them were, you know, blown out in the explosion. Yeah. And then suddenly their bodies are coming together. Glory to God. Glorified body. Amen. Getting to that soul. And then we all have perfect body. Man, that is a, that's going to be an exciting day. That's why, do you hear why when people are praying, even so come Lord Jesus? You know, Amen. we want Lord to come right now yes. because of that. Yeah. You don't have to worry ever about getting sick again. Amen. Right? Right. I mean, you want to see the Lord. I mean, that's your primary goal. Think about it. But how is all this possible? Because of the love of Christ. Yeah? Yes. I mean, he went through everything. You know, you and I should be ashamed every single day. Because we don't think about the Lord's death like we should. Right. We don't think about his love like we should. Right. We just take it for granted. Yes. I mean, just look at the past week. You have to worry about your school. You have to worry about your work. You have to worry about, you know, your body. You have to worry about, you know, food and everything, right? Yes. I mean, did you even care about, you know, Lord's death, right? I mean, did you even thank him for his death? Amen, amen. Do you really thought about his love that he shown to you and me on Calvary as well as even right now? Yes. I mean, we sing, what a friend we have in Jesus, right? He's our best friend. Amen. I mean, he keeps us get going. And we're part of the body of Christ. Man, wow, you and I are neglecting too much. 
You and I are just forgetting too much. You and I are just becoming a more and more ungrateful Christian. That's why we are preaching. That's why we have this time to just reflect on our spiritual state. You know, where is love of Christ, you know, stand in my life? God showed his love through Christ, right? And I have that love in me. What am I doing with it? Let's go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I mean, aren't you thankful that as, as we read these verses, that love of Christ will never, ever send you straight down to hell. Amen. You'll never have to worry about burning hell yes. because of the love of Christ. Man, that alone should make you just shout and just run the aisle. That should just make you just smile. You know, just give that joy to you. Man, I don't have to burn in hell Amen. because of love of Christ. And not only that, because of love of Christ, I can endure and I can win daily this Christian walk, Thank which you. is not an easy road. Yes. Romans chapter verse 35, the Bible says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Amen. Shall tribulation, are you going through some hardships in your life, brethren? Distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sore. All of this, Apostle Paul went through. He went through all of it, a lot more than you and I, yes. literally. Look at verse 36. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. I mean, doctrinally wise, it's during great tribulation, you know, Bunch of Jews are being killed by, you know, false prophet, antichrist. Yes. They're like offered up as a slaughter. But Apostle Paul put it there. Why? Because as Christians, spiritually speaking, if you love Christ and love of Christ is in you, persecution is, they go hand in hand. Amen. Right? If you don't have any persecution in your life, if you know love of Christ, you are going to be persecuted. But why do people don't see any persecution in their life? I know why. Because you're running away from it. Simple as that. You don't want to deal with it. Like, oh, they call me, you know, those, you know, Bible dumpers, KJV only. Lord, I don't want to really talk about it, you know? Yeah. Oh, Lord, you know? Giving track to that person is the worst thing that I could do today. Yes. That might go off on me, right? But when you look at verse 36, people are dying for the Lord. Think about all the martyrs, right? i give you an example. In, nine, in 1540, a girl was burned at the stake. We're talking about girls, right? And it was under the reign of King Henry VIII. Her name was Joan Busher. And as she was set up on the stake, and as the fire started going up, the flames were going up, she was getting burned. This Anglican bishop just preached and vilified in front of her for like 15 minutes. Can you, like, he had to raid, right? Probably, you know, you're going to blah, 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 you know, you, you know, worthless, blah, blah, blah. But whatever he said was never recorded because it was worthless stuff. Amen. You know, but her reply was recorded. Think about it. Joan Busher was being burned at the stake. And Joan, her response was she laughed at him. Amen. We're talking about someone who's being burned at the stake. Yes. I don't know. I don't know if you've ever seen someone getting burned whole body burn. I haven't seen anybody laugh. Joan was actually laughing at him. She laughed as she was burning. You know, all these martyrs that you see in Fox's Book of Martyrs, even right now, you know, people who are suffering for Christ in different, you know, communist countries out there. You know, the Lord gives them grace. Amen. Sometimes they don't feel anything. I'm, I believe it. Yes. Sometimes they do because probably they could handle it, right? Yes. She laughed at that bishop and she said, You live like a rogue. 
You talk like a rogue. Go home and read your Bible. <laughs> That's what she said. Amen. Think about it. She's been burning already, right? For, I don't know, 10 minutes plus. Yeah. Probably if someone's burning, 10 minutes probably feels like eternity, yes. right? Even one minute, 10 seconds feels like eternity, right? Amen. And then she said, you talk like a rogue, go home and read your Bible. That was a quite a dying testimony. Yes. Do you think it was an easy road for Joan Busher? No. No. But she had that love of Christ in her. Amen. And then continue, like verse 37, Romans 8, 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. We're not just conquerors. We're more than conquerors. Amen. Think about it. Alexander the Great conquered a lot of the world. Genghis Khan conquered a lot of the world. Napoleon conquered a lot of places. Not even close. Not even close. More than them. Yes. You could conquer. You could be more than a conqueror of whatever is happening in your life, whether it's tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword. Any of them. Because of love of Christ. It's almost like this. The devil's trying to get you. Man, your boss is really bad. He's making your life horrible. And you are a saved Christian? Man, just curse God, right? But you could be like, no, man. You know, love of Christ gets me through. You know, one day, because of my testimony, because love of Christ, I want to win that soul to the Lord. Man, that's you trying to attack me from the, through that person. Instead of not just, you know, bearing it, you're actually becoming more than a conqueror. Yes. Because the devil says, okay, be down, be down, you know, be depressed, be depressed. No, you're like, you know what? Because of the Lord, I'm better than that. Yes. Right? I'm going to do things that you hate the most. I'm going to preach the gospel to that person. <laughs> I'm going to make you, because the Lord says, Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I'm going to pray, pray hard. That that person repents and gets saved. Amen. I mean, that is great testimony. And how could that happen? Why? Because nothing can separate us from love of Christ. Let's continue. For I am persuaded that neither death. Think about it. For Joan Busher, death didn't matter. I mean, she was actually literally burning at the stake. It didn't matter to her. Nor life. Nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers. Not, not even this, you know, spiritual warfare, these things. Yeah. Nothing. Nor yeah. things present, nor things to come. Future. Think about it. You and I have a really, really bad habit of worrying about future. Right? Yes. Where's money? Where's job? My health? All of those things. Come on now. I mean, that's just human being. Yeah. Human psychology. That's just being normal. But however, we don't have to. Why? Because of love of Christ. Amen. Think about it. Again, verse 30, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life. Apostle Paul is so sure. When he's persuaded, when you and I are persuaded, we're so sure. Right? I'm persuaded. I mean, you know, Lord's going to come back and then take us up there. Lord yes. willing. Whether, whether or not, you know, whether I die or not, I'm going to be in heaven no matter what. Yes. I'm not going to burn in hell. That kind of assurance and conviction, he says, you know, things to come, 39, nor height, nor depth. Think about it. People, I mean, Titanic had a Bible-believing preacher. He went to the deep depth of the ocean, right? Yes. But he's going to rise again. Amen. I mean, his soul's already in heaven, Woo. but now he's going to get glorified body too. Nor any other creature. I mean, bring on the dinosaurs, right? You know, bring on the aliens, bring on anything. Yeah. You know, nothing. I mean, people are nowadays, you know, very scared of, you know, those parasites. They are scary. Yeah. I mean, you go somewhere, you know, some, some park out there or a pond, water, and then you get, you contract those parasites. I mean, yeah. you could lose a limb or you could even die, right? Yeah. So it is true and it is real. But even any of those creatures, verse 39, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Think about it. None of these can separate us from love of God. 
Amen. We can't go through all of this. I mean, it's not an easy road, but you don't have to make it harder. Yeah. If you don't constantly think about love of Christ every day of your life, then what's going to happen? Your Christian walk will be very, very hard. And then don't tell me that I didn't tell you about it. Man, I learned through my own experiences, right? You know, when I neglect love of Christ, when I don't think about it, what Christ did for me, then it becomes really hard. Yes. Because that's when devil's like, you know what, I got you to that. You know? Sunday was pretty hard, you know, because you're amongst the Bible-believing brethren, your mind was ready. But today's Monday, tomorrow's Tuesday, you know, I'm going to get you. I'm going to make your life as hard as possible. I mean, you know, you're going to see me burn forever in hell. You're going to go to heaven. But until then, this living earth will be the literal hell for you. Yeah. That's what he's going to do. That's what he's been doing. Yeah. That's why many Christians give up their faith. You should never give up your faith, yeah. right? Especially if you have the right faith. Yeah. And then don't, don't tell me, you know, love of Christ, love of God, you know, where you... How should I say? You pollute it by not preaching the whole truth, right? Yes. Love of Christ essentially tells you what? First of all, why did Christ come to earth? To save sinners. Yes. Right? So how does he save sinners? And where does he save sinners from? Yes. From hell. From sin. Then if you truly have love of Christ in you, you have to preach. Amen. Apostle Paul said, preach the word in season, out of season. Amen. Then what are you going to preach? Oh, God loves you. God loves you. God is love. God is love. That's not enough. No. You're going to preach the whole story. Yes. Amen. You know, you don't trust Christ, you're going to burn in hell. Amen. Yeah. And you have to preach against sin. That is showing true love of Christ to lost souls out there. Then, brethren, we talk about it here and there. When that happens, you will continue to remember first love, right? That's the biggest pitfall that you and I go through. Because when war prolongs, gets longer, like Vietnam, people want to just give up, right? Yes. Christian war, until you die or until rapture happens while you're living, is going to continue. Yes. And it's going to feel and look and longer and longer and longer. Then how are you going to go through it? Remember, you could remember that first love, what Lord had done for you, right? When that is real to you, when that is in your heart, I mean, like a lot of him says, you know, the day's worth the living. Because you could actually do something for the Lord. You could actually, I hate that word, but, you know, because of all the false preacher, you could spread, you know, love of Christ with truth. 100% truth, then your life is actually worth the living, right? Amen. Because it lives. Amen. I can face tomorrow. Yes. Then, brethren, you are going to see growth in your Christian life. You don't have to be always in that same spot. Man, my life is like a groundhog day, Christian walk. You know, I just have up and down, up and down, up and down. You, know, you got to get out of that stage. Amen. You can always be up and down and up and down and up and down. I mean, you could have your up and down, but you should have more growth. Yes. You know, just like a good investment, good rate of return, it's got to go up. Yes. Man, at the end of the day, if you started out here, you should end up somewhere here. Yeah. You shouldn't be like this, 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 and then come down, no. right? And you shouldn't be like this, 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 and end up right here. No, you got to have a continual growth. Yeah. And how are you going to do it in this Christian walk, which is not an easy role? Bye. Having that love of Christ, which is in you, and it's just got to, you know, as the Bible says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Now it's in you. You got to work it out. You got to show it. If you have good things in you, if you know good thing, just don't keep it to yourself. Amen. Just start sharing it, right? That's real sharing, you know. You're not just sharing, you know, love, 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 love. You're actually sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. And that you're becoming a good example to your husband, wife, your children. Because besides from sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, you have to be that exemplary testimony 
like Joan Busher, like Sister Choi, to your loved ones yes. and your body of Christ, right? I don't want people to think of somebody, you know, say, I, I, I pick out a name, right? Brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so. And your first reaction is, oh, no, you know? Or like, or it's like I'm going to pair you guys up to do things, right? Or, and then make you a team. And then, you know, like when you're picking teams, you know one kid, you really don't want to be on their team because you know you're going to lose for sure, right? <laughs> or a couple of kids, right? You know? And then it's a worse combination. They're bad at it, and they don't even try. But if kid tries hard, you know, it's commendable. You know, even if you lose, they did their best. Yeah. But there are always ones there, you know, they don't give any effort at all, right? And I don't want our, any of our, you know, body of Christ, our church members, or people who's listening to be that person, to be that Christian, right? Yes. You take it for granted, love of Christ, which saved you from hell, and now you're like, okay, you know, it's just my own Christian life, you know. Yeah. I'm just going to tear everybody down, you know. It's me, selfish me, that's all that matters. But if you truly know love of Christ, Lord is first. And you know who's second? It's not you. No. Others are second, right? And then you. You're always the last. Yes. You're always the last. Christ died for his own enemies. Think about it. Yes. Would you ever die for your enemy? No. Not me. I'm just being honest. Yes. If someone killed my family, I'm not going to die for them. Yeah. But that's our human love. Yes. That's our human feelings. But love of Christ is beyond that. Amen. And one day, you know, you could get to a point where even the enemies, you could love and you could pray, which the Lord said to do, yes. right? But I'm just being, you know, honest with you, right? If someone hurt your daughter, if someone hurt your wife or your mom, I mean, it's going to be hard. But does that mean that we don't do what the Lord told us to do? You overcome your flesh with the Lord, with the love of Christ. Yes. How you become like that? How you become like, you know, martyrs in the Fox's Book of Martyrs who could actually die for the Lord, right? Because they live each day like that. Let's not be someone who suddenly gets convicted today and forget about it for the rest of our life. Amen. Let's be convicted today, repent of any of our ways that we need to, and get truly be changed. And truly be that someone who shows and who has a testimony of love of Christ, not to the lost souls only, but to the brethren. That's when you know brotherly love is real. That's when you know brotherly love grows. We can't just be talkers, right? Right. I love you. I pray for you. But if first thing is not right in the first place, if love of Christ is you know, not really, really living in your life, then it's not going to work. Yeah. So let that work first. When you do that, man, brethren, your Christian life will just change. Your perspectives will change. Things of the world, like what Demas went after, that's secondary, man. I want to do number one thing that will glorify God. And the rest will be, you know, just, they'll just fall in place. Yes. If glorify God is to keep me giving up this, me being persecuted, I'm going to do it. That's when true sacrifices happen. You're like, oh, you know, it's so hard. Lord sacrificed his life for you and me. Yes. Is that really hard? Is, is you, you really harder than Lord's, what he did for you and me? No. He gave up his life. Amen. He didn't just give up his life, you know, just getting his, you know, head chopped off. He shed all of his precious blood. Yes. He went through the most painful death a human being could go through. Yes. Drop every single blood for you and me. Thank you, Lord. You and I shouldn't have any excuses. Right. Trials, tribulations, famine, nakedness, anything you're going through, brethren, it's not going to separate you and me ever from love of Christ. Thank Let's you. pray. Dear Heavenly Father, sometimes we just need to look at ourselves in the mirror 
and just see how pitiful we've been as a Christian. You die for us, Lord. You shed your precious blood. You're inside of us. I mean, you die for your enemy. And what do we do? We just let you be the second priority, third priority. We don't even think about you. You saved us from hell, Lord. Amen. Help us to realize that on a daily basis. Remember and practice that first love, Lord. I pray that until you come back, Lord, we'll be like Apostle Paul. Just keep on fighting as soldiers of Christ. Don't let the things of this world and affairs of this world steer away the wrong way. I pray that you give us strength. We can't do it on the Lord. You give us strength to fight the good fight against the world, the devil, and the flesh. And not be like Demas, where you just love the world, the flesh, and the devil, and just quit the race. We know it's not an easy road, Lord. It never was going to be, but we can endure it, and we could joyfully walk this road, run this road, and finish this road with your love, Lord, with the love of Christ in us. We pray that whatever happens from now on, help us do everything for your glory, do our best for you in every little thing to big things, Lord God, and above all, even so come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.